As the pandemic rages on, the gamers try to overthrow the wealthy, and political tensions are as high as ever, there is only one thing that anime fans can do. And that's to stay inside trying to keep up with all the seasonal anime. I swear, every season seems to have more anime than the previous one. And with this season having a plethora of sequels, I felt more behind than ever. Regardless of that, here are my first impressions of this season. I gotta say, for me, Wonder Egg Priority has the most potential of any anime airing this season. Hell, it may even have the most potential of any anime I've seen in a while. This anime handles dark themes like depression and suicide through a very thoughtful and meaningful way. And on top of that, the animation is just beautiful. Every single shot feels like it was ripped out of your name or weathering with you. The production quality of this anime is anime film level. Cloverworks really outdid themselves with this one. And to top it all off, the CG used in this anime is phenomenal. I know that in the anime community, CG is usually frowned upon, but in Wonder Egg Priority, not only does it further the plot, but it just doesn't look bad at all. Basically, the CG in Wonder Egg is used in the dream world, and it helps to add on this sense of just mystery and wonder to the viewer. It also helps serve the purpose of separating the dream world from reality through a very visual means. Overall, I feel like Wonder Egg Priority does a fantastic job in handling the dark subject that it's taking on. And if all honesty, if Cloverworks keeps pumping out these 10 out of 10 episodes, this anime may land a spot in my top 10 anime. I'm not gonna lie, one of my most anticipated anime of this season was Skate the Infinity. Skating was a hobby that I picked up over quarantine, and I really wanted to see an anime about it because I find it to be a genuinely interesting sport. I view this anime through two different perspectives. Perspective one is as a skateboarder and someone who genuinely enjoys skateboard culture and wants to see more of it in media. And perspective two is as an anime fan. The problem with watching this as someone who genuinely enjoys skateboarding is that it has nothing to do with skateboarding. Like seriously, in the first episode, the blue haired dude, Longa, yeah, he tapes his feet to the board. How is that supposed to work? And he wins the race on top of that. Like what? And then after that, there's a dude with a board that has Siri on it. Like Siri on the board. Like the dude has Siri on his board. And don't get me started on Longa's board with the, the office spinning wheels. Like the, that shouldn't work. That is impossible to skate. Legit, the only person from the entire series that actually skates like a normal human being is A, the background characters and B, the main character. Basically, every character's skating style is super unrealistic and I don't think I could even classify this anime as a skating anime. Okay, now that I'm done with my rant about how skating should work in anime, let me talk about this from the perspective of an anime fan. This anime is good. Very good. I feel like a lot of people will sleep on this anime because of how cartoonish it looks, or maybe the fact that the MC literally looks like the dude from Beyblade. Yeah, that guy. But this anime seriously kept me entertained for every episode of it that I've watched so far. It's funny, has a very enjoyable cast, and has some phenomenal animation. On top of that, the skating scenes often feel like a nice, high intensity shown in battle. Studio Bones didn't disappoint with this one, and like I said with Wonder Egg Priority, if the momentum for this anime keeps going, it might end up being one of my favorites of this season. On the subject of anime boys riding boards, we've got Wave, Let's Go Surfing. Wave is basically everything that Skate the Infinity is, but worse. <laughs> In Wave, the main character, Corgi, never learned how to surf, but has a phenomenal sense of balance because plot armor. On top of that, he also never learned how to swim, despite growing up on a beach. One morning when he's walking his dog, he sees Sho, a surfing prodigy, shredding some waves early in the morning. Captivated by Sho's surfing, Corgi decides that he too wants to learn how to surf. Okay, ignoring the fact that our main character literally can't swim and decided to pick up surfing as a hobby, I'd say this anime is pretty enjoyable. I can sit down and watch an episode without feeling like I'm wasting my time. But one of my major gripes with this anime is that the CG isn't good. Like this anime originally came out as a movie. Where's that movie energy, bro? Like Wonder Egg Priority has you beat with that movie animation. You gotta, you gotta move, you gotta move, Wave. Come on, bro. 
that's on me for going in with high expectations. But come on, man, it just kills the mood every time. You're like seeing him get the wave and actually surf. And then suddenly, boom, it's a PS2 cutscene. Honestly, I continue to watch this anime just because I like the beach and summer vibes, especially in this cold winter that I'm having right now. But if you're having a tight schedule and you're trying to pick which anime to watch, this one's kind of on that low priority list. Honestly, if you're not really caring about which sport is being represented and you just want to watch an anime about some dudes on boards, I would say go with Skate the Infinity. But if you like beach vibes, um, go with Wave. Honestly, it just comes down to personal preference. To me, both of these anime are very similar and you can't go wrong with watching either of them. But if you're looking for a well-animated, realistic story about surfing, I'm sorry, but this anime is not for you. Regardless of that, it's still a pretty fun watch. Alright guys, I'm gonna be 100% honest, I hate Isekai. I feel like it's an oversaturated genre with too little to offer. And just digging through all the trash Isekai just to find one gem in the mass of trash isn't an activity that I like doing. But this season, I made a promise to myself and my friend that convinced me to watch some more isekai. And I said I was going to watch all of So I'm a Spider, So What? And after watching two episodes of that anime, I just couldn't do isekai anymore. I literally almost gave up on the genre as a whole. But, big, big but here. Mushoku Tensei saved the isekai genre for me. The best part of Mushoku Tensei is that you can remove all of the character and like backstory and boom, you got a fantasy anime, right? But then you add that stuff and boom, you got character development for your main character. It's phenomenal, I really enjoy it. And it's so refreshing to see a good isekai for once. Additionally, we spent like a total of two minutes in the real world and then boom, we were in on the action. And Mushoku Tensei started off in a way that normally isekais don't really do. And that's with the main character literally starting as a baby. Additionally, the first few episodes were just watching him grow up, which was something that was really, really refreshing because there wasn't some sort of giant demon lord trying to end the world. I'm sure that's gonna get introduced later on in the plot, but right now he's just a kid dealing with kid issues. Sure, he has the maturity of a 40 year old man, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't face some issues that normal kids would. For instance, he doesn't know anything about the world, he doesn't know how to do magic, and he doesn't know how to sword fight. Those are skills that he has to learn. And we as viewers don't know anything about that either, so we're learning with him. And at its core, Mushoku Tensei isn't just a good isekai. It's just a solid story. And now that I finally seem to have found an isekai that holds my attention for more than 5 minutes, let's see if Mushoku Tensei really does end up being that great. Earlier in the video, I stated that this season was the season for sequels, and uh, don't get me wrong, it is. We got some big names like Dr. Stone, Quintessential Quintuplets, ReZero, Beastars, Attack on Titan, all returning this season. And boy, I haven't watched like half of those. Seriously, I like hate being asked my opinion on these shows because I just haven't had an opportunity to watch season one. So anytime I see a discussion about them online, I can't join in. But besides some anime like Beastars, ReZero, and Quintessential Quintuplets falling into the never ending pit, which I call my plan to watch list, there are some sequels that I have been keeping up with this season and I genuinely love them. Because baby, this season has some bangers coming back. Look, I'm not gonna sit here and try to convince you to watch season four of Attack on Titan. If you watch seasons one through three, you're probably gonna be watching this season anyway. But I have to talk about it because everyone and their grandparents are talking about this season. I've seen more angry internet discussions and legit some of the best moral conversations that I've ever heard spawned from Attack on Titan and not actual real world politics. As a manga reader, I like to sit back and enjoy the bickering between the anime fans that are pro Marley and the anime fans that are pro Scouts. Because I know that neither side is correct, but that's besides the point. Personally, I do recommend reading the manga for Attack on Titan over watching the anime, but that's a discussion for a whole other video. Another returning show that's just shrouded in controversy is The Promised Neverland Season 2. I stayed anime only for the show because I believe that part of the greatness of Promised Neverland Season 1 was watching it seasonally. The suspense of waiting week after week for the next episode really kept me on my toes and I feel like it added to the experience of watching the anime. 
So I was disappointed to hear that they are going anime original for this anime. But looking on the bright side, that just means I have more Promised Neverland content to consume. Now I can go and read the manga without worrying that I'll be ruining my anime watching experience. Additionally, I've heard from manga readers that the ending for the manga was predictable and not that good. And also the manga's writer is behind the anime project and is fully supportive of it. So I believe that the anime ending might even surpass that of the manga. So far from what I've watched, the show is handling itself pretty well and I haven't noticed any major flaws. It is a little fast paced at some points, but that's to be expected of a show where the kids are literally running away. And finally, the last show that I'm watching this season is none other than Dr. Stone. Dr. Stone is Dr. Stone, there's not much more that I can say about it. If you watch season one, you're gonna like this season. In all honesty, there is no convincing you to watch season two if you watch season one, because you're probably gonna do it anyways. So let me just say, Dr. Stone is still as great as it used to be. Well folks, that wraps it up for this video. Thank you guys again for watching till the end. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe and bell icon down below. Uh, yeah, and until next time, peace out guys.